Hi, this is Marjan Love, and this is Marjan's Musings. And today's show is one, two, one, two, one. Now, if you were a numerology buff, you might have a lot of fun with that. But it's December 1st, 2021. So we could throw some zeros in there. We could be one, two, zero, one, two, zero, two, one. I don't know. My father uh, used to program things for NASA in a language called binomial. It was made up of ones and zeros. That's all it was. And then later, he worked in a language called hexadecimal. I don't know very much about hexadecimal. What I do know is that quilting sometimes uses hexagons. And I decided during the whole COVID thing that I would make a hexagon quilt, and I was going to make it for my kid sister Patrice. And the sides were 12 and 3 quarter inches, and from point to point, it was 25 inches, and from side to side, it was 22 inches. So let me show you how that worked out. Here is one of the blocks. And what I did was I did a thing called fussy cutting. I took a hexagon shape and put it on a fabric with roses on it. And I cut each rose. And then I took this little template, which has a window in it and outside, and I made the little triangles. And if you see, the triangles fit right inside the little window. And the reason that it's bigger is so that you can cut it and leave your stitching margin. Now, anybody that quilts already knows that, but there might be people out there who've never run a sewing machine. You know, back in the day, there was this song, look for the union label, and all these people be singing and dancing around. If you want to see the actual video from the 80s, John Oliver did a thing on unions, which I found a little startling, a little sad, because unions built the middle class. and helped prosperity in the United States so that the capitalists who run the businesses didn't use the workers as if they were slaves. The capitalists who made money had to share some of the profits with the workers who then got a living wage and benefits. It was a change because in my grandmother's day, she ran an old treadle sewing machine and she would sew clothing and quilts. I now have two treadle sewing machines and one of them is rigged up with a hand crank and the other one is rigged up with a motor. And I have a third one, the oldest one, is at the Congregational Church waiting for all this endless COVID to finally settle down and be the flu. You know, the 1918 pandemic shows up every year as influenza. That's where we get the flu. It never totally went away, but it doesn't kill anywhere near as many people as it did when it first started. And I'm hoping with this new Omicron variant that 
if people go ahead and they wear their masks to protect babies, people with cancer, elders, that this Omicron variant will spread around because for a virus to exist, it has to be able to reproduce itself. Well, in order to reproduce itself, you have to spread the virus from one person to another. With the lethal variants, that's why the masks are so important, because you don't want to spread a brand new lethal variant to somebody else, it'll kill them. But as a virus matures, and viruses do mature, we as a species, the human species, has grown up with coronaviruses. They've been around longer than we have. So corona is not brand new. It was that it mutated, it changed, and it changed into something deadly. And that's why we had such a horrible 2019 and 2020. There are people right now in 2021 still battling with it. And the idea of herd immunity, well, that's all well and good, but you could lose a lot of good people that way. So if you could do something simple, like wear a mask, and protect little children, elders, sick people from getting a mean influenza, then that's what we were asked to do. I don't know that it was a bad ask. I talked to you last time that I felt very sad and kind of angry that people turned it into a political football. And so now we have Omicron. And they're calling it the South African variant, even though they found it in Bavaria and other places. Just because a lab found a variant in a certain place, labeling it South African and then denying anybody in South Africa the right to fly anywhere. Trevor Noah does an interesting show about that. <laughs> and he has his sidekick do the whole panic attack, like, oh my God, I'm going to be in a two-bedroom apartment with my kid, and I want to play my Nintendo, and I can't. And it was funny. I sat there giggling. I talked to my director, Becky, and I said, you know, we're coming into the holidays. It's December. I do not want to talk about politics. Like, I don't know about you, but I've had it. Well, no, I don't think that's maybe here. Like, if I tread water real hard, I can keep my nose out of the political slime. Um, I get so distressed with all of it. And I saw kind of an interesting quote from Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Picone. And it says, character, this is for February the 4th. We're not up to February the 4th, but I opened the book and it opened to that and I thought, oh, that's perfect. Character, people seem not to see that their opinion of the world is also a confession of their character. And that's a quote from our own Ralph Waldo Emerson. The world isn't especially concerned with making us happy as much as we would like it to be. Most of us are well aware of this fact. So when we complain that things aren't going the way we would like them to, we only annoy those around us while further darkening our own mood. The more we whine and criticize, the smaller and more unpleasant we become. Today, instead of complaining about negative things, 
I will praise positive things. And I thought, wow, that's absolutely perfect. So I brought in all sorts of positive things, like we're coming into the holiday season and the second annual Winter Lights on Cape Ann in Gloucester, Rockport, Manchester by the Sea, and Essex, which already started on November 26th, is going to go all the way through January the 2nd. And they're going to do it from 4 o'clock to 10 p.m. And if you want, you can pick up one of these flyers. They have them at Brothers Brew in Rockport, among many other places. But I love Brothers Brew. My husband and I go in there and we get croissants, or my husband likes to get panini sandwiches, and he drinks this coffee that's like high octane. It's called dark sin. I'm kind of a decaf girl myself. I like mine iced. But it shows you the second annual Winter Lights on Cape Ann 2021, and it has the map of where you can see them, which reminded me of being a little girl. And my grandma and grandpa would take me riding sometime around, oh, after the 15th of December on a weekend, and we'd go look at everybody's yard decorations and their lights, their Christmas lights. The other Christmas goodie I have is Christmas in Rockport, because that's where I live. I live in Rockport. It shows where all the Christmas things in Rockport are going to be, and it too has a map that has numbers where the restroom is. You know, that's really important when you're walking around, it's chilly. And where the welcome center is and where kids can get pictures with Santa and when they're gonna do the Christmas tree lighting, which is coming up really soon. That's coming this weekend on December 4th at four o'clock. And there's gonna be horse-drawn carriage rides and evening shopping events. One of the shops in Rockport that I really, really like is the N Street Gallery. My son knows that and he bought me this beautiful pendant. I've shown you in the past pictures of my gorgeous Dax and my poor little Cookie Monster. Well, I had this on and Cookie Monster was snuggling me and she got her foot caught in the chain and the chain broke and the pendant fell on the floor and one of the little crystals came out. And I was so sad. Not because the piece is all that expensive. It's just rhodonite with little crystals in silver. But my son gave it to me, and I was hurt and upset that I was such a klutz. I let the dog rip the necklace. I broke the chain. So I got a hold of the proprietress, and I said, Hon, is it okay if I come down, I show you this, maybe you can fix it for me. So I went in, and she didn't have the exact same pink but she did have a dark pink, the right color, and she repaired it for me so that now the keepsake from my son is still something that I'm proud to wear, and I didn't have to go, oh, Andrew, I'm so sorry I broke your necklace. I have a different necklace now. I got this at the second glance, and I thought, oh boy, this is right about time. It's got a little angel on it. It unscrews, and inside I put nitroglycerin tablets. I'm that age. If you don't know what nitroglycerin tablets are, I'm not going to explode anytime soon. But like I told you years ago when I first started the show, 
I'm getting up there in years and I've got stuff going wrong. And one of them is because when I was a kid, I had scarlet fever, which was the COVID-19 of my youth when I was a little girl. Scarlet fever came through and I caught it. I got a fever of 103. Um, they were so scared for me that they had the priest come to the house and give me extreme unction, which is like what the Catholic people call the sacrament of the last rites. And my mom is begging the priest and crying, no, no, don't do that to her. <laughs> the priest turned around, looked at my mom and goes, you know, this isn't a magic spell. You know, the creator of the universe, which forms the ground of all being and sustains all life everywhere, is kind of busy. Your daughter's in trouble. This is a special prayer to ask God to take a look in this direction and please help her. So my mom mellowed out. <laughs> And the priests there asking me about God and my beliefs, and I'm like three. And I told him, you know, I'm burning up with fever. It actually went up to 106. They were afraid I was going to get brain damage. I think my brain's pretty okay. My heart is not pretty okay, which is why I have this little vial of nitroglycerin pills. If I get chest pain, I can take one of these. And usually, it opens up my blood vessels, and I don't hurt so much, and I live. If the chest pain continues, I take a second one, and I call 911, and I say, Hi, um, I have chest pains, and I'm taking my second nitroglycerin. And they will come, and they will take me to Addison Gilbert Hospital, which is a lovely little hospital near my house where they have taken care of me before. I can remember being in the emergency room on a gurney and my son coming in white-faced and sweaty and my husband with a fine tremor holding my hand. And Dr. Wolf sorted me out, I think. You know, I'm getting old. My brain doesn't always work as good as I wish it did. I think when I caught the COVID back in 2020 in February, I think having those fevers and the coughing and the shortness of breath really did a job on me. I don't know that I'm in, as clear in my mind as I used to be. I dragged my booty around for months. And uh, they called that post-viral fatigue syndrome. If any of you are going through that, hang tough. It does get better. I mean, I literally, for like 12 weeks, felt like, I don't know if any of you use dish rags anymore. My grandmother used to use rags to wash dishes. And after a while, because of the food and the old-fashioned soaps, they would get stinky and stiff and blah. And there was an old expression that you felt like an old dish rag. I never used dish rags much. I bought cellulose sponges. But there's a wonderful new curiosity stream did a program called Going Circular made me remember my father. You know, my father's been dead since 2002. So in a month, that'll be 20 years. I'm like, oh my goodness, it can't be that long. Yep, it can. But my father met this scientist named Lovelock. And he had this theory, Gaia, that the earth was a living thing. The entire globe was alive. And that 
everything living on the planet and things that weren't living like the wind and the tides. There's a tide that goes around Antarctica. It's called the circumpolar tide. That these things that we don't think of as being alive, that's sort of like the blood vessels in your body. You know, we're familiar here in Massachusetts with the Gulf Stream, but there are a lot of huge tidal things that go under the surface throughout the oceans. And that circumpolar current is of concern right now because it's warming up and it's melting some of the ice in Antarctica, which is not a good thing. But anyway, the Going Circular program goes into a lot of detail about how we, as human beings, could live our lives a little bit differently and maybe slow down the degradation of the environment and maybe go get all the recycle that didn't get recycled and turn it into something useful instead of using more raw materials to make things for ourselves. I think you have to be a certain age to go to the store and see bell-bottom jeans and go, wow, they're not called bell-bottoms anymore, boomers. They're called flares but I grabbed myself two pairs before I saw Going Circular, where they talked about how the fashion industry stays afloat through overconsumption. People buy more clothing than they need, and when they're tired of clothing, Instead of cutting used clothing apart to make quilts like my grandmother's generation, eh, we pitch it in the Goodwill box or if we're not tuned into other people's survival, we throw it into the landfill. And so when I had lost all my weight, which took three years, I got down to a size 14 clothes. Now, they were a little tight, I have to admit. I was comfier in my size 16s, but I'm back up to a size 22. I had kind of interesting experience at the endocrinologist. You know, for decades now, they've said being obese makes you diabetic. Well, I gained back a whole lot of weight, so I was terrified when they did my A1C. It's a blood test that they draw that looks at how much sugar is coating your red blood cells. Too much sugar on your red blood cells, you go blind, your circulation doesn't work right, they cut your legs off. I wasn't up for that, so I was scared because that weight that I lost. 52 pounds, I gained 30 of it back when Kevin had to go into work and there were no masks and there was no gowns and visors and booties when the virus was killing people by the thousands in New York City. And so my stress level went crazy. And I said to the endocrinologist, I said, how can you possibly gain 30 pounds back in 10 weeks? She said, three pounds a week. Your cortisol, which is a stress hormone, must have been crazy. And I said to her, oh yeah, I have a history of that. She looks at me and I said, yeah. When Kevin was deployed to Iraq, my cortisol was so high that Dr. Pierce told me there's a scale for human cortisol and you're not on it, you're up here. 
I bemoaned the fact that I regained the weight. And she turned around and looked at me. She goes, what, you think you're alone? This lady's Chinese. And she has kind of an interesting manner. And she goes, everybody gained weight. And that kind of made me feel less guilty, less self-loathing. She did my three-month blood test, which is different than glucose. You don't eat, you fast, you go in and they do glucose test. If that's high, that's not good. And then they start checking you for diabetes. Well, they told me I had diabetes like for years now. So I had this test I was afraid of. And she said to me, your blood sugar is perfect. Keep doing what you're doing. I was like, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Well, what Dr. Pierce taught me is don't eat concentrated sweets. And what Dr. Lustig, who's University of California, San Francisco, he's a pediatric endocrinologist. What he teaches everybody is sugar makes you fat. Fat can make you fat because it has a lot of calories, but sugar sets off insulin and insulin tells the body, take blood glucose and turn it into fat. So now that we're able to go back to the YMCA, I went out and I bought two fatty girl bathing suits and I got my um, audio flood from Australia and I put dance tunes on it and I'm going to be dancing in the water at the Y. Why am I dancing in the water instead of upstairs at the dance studio? Because I'm almost 70 and my joints are not what they used to be. And having gravity eliminated a lot of it being in the water, I can move around, do all kinds of things that if I tried it on a dance floor, I'd wind up eating ibuprofen like M&Ms. But back to the quilt. I learned how to do all these interesting shapes. This one is called a 60 degree diamond. And this one here is a 120 degree um, triangle. And if you look, it fits right into the diamond. And the little triangle that I use, it also fits right into the diamond. And I got these wonderful shapes from Cabin in the Woods. They're like one of my favorite companies because with the diabetes, my vision isn't as good as it used to be. And I called the lady up and I said, listen, I have diabetes and I don't see as well as I used to. Can you make me a special set of shapes that have a three uh, eighths inch margin so that I don't hurt myself on the sewing machine? And she said, I'd love to do that for you. And so she made me all these wonderful shapes. Well, I got into buying shapes. I had a party. And there was one that I needed that I didn't have, and I went online. I don't know about the supply chain for you, but for me, during the lockdown, it wasn't so great. And it took months for this to finally arrive from China. It's a 60-degree diamond, but it's big enough to do the borders of these hexagons I was making for my sister's quilt. <laughs> it arrives. It's in centimeters. It's not in inches. And because it sort of fit, I thought, oh, no big whoop. I'll just use that. So I'm at the point where I'm doing the actual quilting of my quilt. So I make the uh, hexagons. This one, I love this one. I found bunnies 
My sister and I have a thing about bunnies, and I found these bunnies. Um, my father used to take us to feed the ducks at the pond, and the kindergarten where we went to school, the kindergarten teacher had bunnies. So my sister and I have a thing about bunnies. So I made the thing with the bunnies, and this here, this is kind of interesting. This fabric is a special sort of fabric um, called a batik, and um, it's done on the islands in Indonesia and in Bali and places, and the people either carve wood or they bend metal, and they put that in molten wax, and then they take that and they put it on fabric that's either been dyed a light color, like here, this pale teal. They dyed the fabric the pale teal, then they put the chop, I think it's called a chop. In China, when you stamp things with stones, it's called a chop. I'm not sure. I should check that out. Anyway, it's a wood carving, and you dunk it in wax, and you put it on the light-colored fabric, and then you dye it again in the gorgeous purple, and the part that was turquoise is protected from the purple dye by the wax. So I've been haunting the second glance. I always go there. And I, I go there because when my husband worked full time, I could go to this wonderful place in Rockport called Lula's Pantry. I get all kinds of interesting, exotic foods there. But I also buy cans of fish you know, and olive oil and stuff. But um, Lula's has interesting things that you may not be able to find anywhere else. I was going to do an experiment for you with um, pumpkin seed oil. I saw a video on YouTube, um, and the guy was talking about the fact that pumpkin seed oil is dichromatic. I thought before I'm under the lights in front of the cameras, I want to try this experiment at home. And I must have had a different brand of pumpkin seed oil that I bought. It didn't work out. And then I thought, oh no, if you're on the set, you don't have a close-up camera to show that the pumpkin seed oil goes from green to dark orangey red and back to green. Because I thought that'd be a fun thing to show you. I was trying to think of things for this month that were happy and joyful and positive. I don't know. My thing about that is, you know, you're aware, if you watch the show, that I'm part Native American, and we just had the day of mourning or Thanksgiving, depending on whether you're Native American or whether you're a grandchild, great-grandchild of white immigrants. And I grew up with the tradition of Thanksgiving because I'm only one-eighth Native American and some of my family's Irish and some of my family's English and some of my family's Danish and some of my family on my dad's side's German and some of my family on my dad's side's French. I mean, I am an Ellis Island baby. Hi, my people came from everywhere. A lot of them later, a lot of them didn't come. Like my neighbor wanted me to, to join the Daughters of the American Revolution, and I didn't qualify, which in a way I was kind of glad. I don't like groups that you're in it by birthright, not because of your character, not because of who you are as a person but because of something that you didn't earn.
and have no control over. I don't know. So instead of eating turkey, my husband and I were not going to have Andrew with us for the first time in over 30 years. Andrew was going to be with his girlfriend's family. And we thought, oh, that's a good thing. And we went to the Peabody Essex Museum with our friends, and we forgot to call ahead, and they weren't open. And we had a feast, a gourmet feast, sort of like going to Lula's pantry and finding, you know, wonderful brie cheese and chocolates and salted caramels and whatever. And we went to the Hawthorne and we had this wonderful luncheon. And because of that, we wound up going to their house for a Thanksgiving. Well, they're vegetarian. So I made carrot, cashew, and ginger soup appetizer. And Kevin, who loves apple pie, helped me make a diabetic-friendly apple pie where you only put like a little hint of sugar and the apples and some flour and some spices. And then for those of you that are boomers, do you remember the green bean casserole with the crispy onions? Well, I diabetic friendly that and skipped the canned soup and sauteed the onions in butter and sauteed the mushrooms in butter and then braised them with brandy to make them, you know, I've got that French part going on, that gourmet thing going on. And, uh, I did the whole crispy onion thing, and I brought that. And my friend Nancy made stuffing patties that the stuffing was as good as my grandmother's stuffing. And she fried those up, and she served them with cashew gravy. And it was delicious. And she baked potatoes for an hour and a half until the skins were crispy and crunchy. And we ate those with butter and sour cream, and she made a beautiful, clear cranberry jelly. It was gorgeous. I wish I could paint with the stuff. It was this perfect rosy pink color. I was like, wow. I asked her how she did it. She boils up these berries and puts them through a sieve with a little bit of sugar. And then we topped it all off with apple pie. And uh, my friend Victor served us brandy because I told him the secret with how come my casserole tasted a little different was that I brandied the mushrooms. And so he brought out brandy and we toasted each other and we thank God. We're all seniors and we all made it through this pandemic. You know, if you look, there's things to be thankful for. So I go to the second glance because a lot of people lost their jobs. And the second glance supports the food pantry. So if I can go into the second glance and spend five, ten dollars on fabric, that helps the glance buy milk and meat and other kinds of dairy and produce that can spoil. I mean, I'm really grateful that a whole lot of people are aware and they donate canned goods to the open door. That's a really important thing. But you can't live on canned beans all the time. And so it was really nice to know that there's a different model now at the second glance. And if you're like me, and you have a little money and you can, think about donating so that Thanksgiving isn't the only thankful holiday in the year, that maybe people can eat a sumptuous supper for Christmas, or, you know, maybe they need some help with Hanukkah, you know? I made this design and I sent one of the blocks that I liked the fabric, but the color didn't 
exactly match my idea for the design. And I sent one of the blocks to my girlfriend Naomi out in Oregon. So back to my, you bought centimeters, you didn't buy inches. If you're working in centimeters, not in inches, when you go to quilt your things together so that they match, um, they might not match up quite right. Um, so I have to kind of figure out what I'm doing here. I will show you uh, still shots of some of the other hexagons that I made that, you know, they just don't quite add up to the exact measurements because I got using centimeters instead of inches. It's like my husband took me and my son and my son's lovely girlfriend, Bella, and when they first let us out of the house, you know, after the long lockdown, we went to Maine and up in Maine, there was this embroidery shop and my husband bought me this shirt that says Marjan's Musings in September of 2020. And, you know, the studio closed. And um, so I'm a two pound bologna in a one pound bag today. But I wore my new bell bottoms and it, the quilting gave me an idea. And I, I had the skinnier pants, you know, the kinds with the skinny legs. And because I'd lost all that weight and I was all full of myself, I, uh, I bought those skinny leg jeans. Well, <laughs> that's not so attractive at this size. I opened up the legs because of the TV show going circular. But we could reuse our clothes. Everything doesn't have to be thrown into the landfill. And I thought, you know, that's brilliant. So the second glance had denim, a whole big, almost I don't know, must have been like eight, ten yards of denim. And they only wanted like ten dollars for it. It's like ten, fifteen dollars a yard at Joanne's. And so I went in and I bought that. And I took the idea of the diamond shape and I made wedges. I thought, hey, flares, which boomers, bell bottoms are back we can wear bell bottoms again and be in style. So I put these long triangles into my skinny leg jeans and I didn't have to throw out my jean. I was at Kohl's, you know, everybody's trying to get everybody to come in and shop. So I went in to shop the clearance, and at the clearance, I found a pair of jeans for a very shapely, large-bottomed woman with a tiny waist. Well, <laughs> I don't have a tiny waist, but I did have the large bottom and the good-sized thighs. And they had been $56 jeans. And I guess my endocrinologist was right because they were on final clearance for $4.80. And I thought, I can afford that. And I bought them and I took them home. And I took a fabric that is autumn leaves and I put a triangle of autumn leaves from the waistband to the top of the back pockets and um, for my birthday my friends um, Rick and Lori came by and my husband fired up the fireplace and we ordered gluten-free pizzas like everybody's got dietary issues right and so we ordered gluten-free pizzas and we sat in my my basement downstairs which 
When the house was built in 1756, the basement fireplace is where they cooked. There were pot hooks and all sorts of things for cooking in that fireplace when we bought the house. We had to line the chimney and stuff, and we put in a flue. We sat there all toasty, and my husband played us music out of his phone. And we sat there listening to music on a telephone, which when I was a kid, that didn't exist. At a fireplace that used to be used to cook food, drinking dark beer and eating pizza. It was fun. And then because Rick and Lori both loved me, I flipped up my shirt and I showed them my hiney with my, with my big V-shaped extension in the shapely girl jeans. It was kind of nice. I now have a wardrobe several pairs of jeans and I didn't have to buy a lot of new ones because when I lost the weight by not eating sugar, I knew how to keep the weight off. What I didn't realize was the stress hormone could kick back in at any time and even if I didn't eat too much and I didn't, eat sugar. And like I said, the endocrinologist told me my blood was perfect. I was perfect. She was thrilled with me. I did not have to go back on diabetes medication. So you can gain weight. Roseanne Barr said, you know, it's okay to be fat. So you're fat. Shut up about it. And I thought, you know, I need to do that. So, I wanted to show you some stuff. This is something I found at the Glance. They have all kinds of vintage things that if you're decorating for Hanukkah or you're decorating for Christmas, you might find stuff there. For those of you that are interested, because I do this every year, the uh, NaNoWriMo, um, I started it this year and then I decided that because of the way things were, I wanted to use my time to make jewelry, to sell at the second glance, so that the second glance could buy food for people who suffered during the pandemic. And when I had the shop down on Bearskin Neck, I was able to go to the wholesale part of the jewelry thing at the Marlboro Gem Show. I bought this gorgeous, gorgeous opal there. And I think I might go to the End Street Gallery and see if the wonderful people there can help me come up with a setting for it. And I have this keepsake. My son, who used to work at Cape Ann Television, is now down at Revere Public Access TV. And one of the things he did on the side with a friend of his was to make a documentary film about saving the koalas down in Australia. I found a little stick pin of a koala bear holding an opal. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give that to Andrew as a stocking stuffer. He'll probably never wear it. He's a guy. What's he going to do with a golden stick pin? But I wanted him to know how proud I was that he made a documentary film that was picked up by Virgin Airlines and shown to all of their passengers. So I would like to leave you with a couple of ideas. One is dance first and think later.
I'm going to dance in the water at the new Cape Band Y. And the other one that I didn't share with you last time is some of my birthday cards. So this one is two snakes and one's playing a guitar. It's your birthday. Oh, yeah. It's your birthday. Oh, yeah, baby. And the other snake asks, how are you holding that guitar? <laughs> and you open it up and it says, don't think too hard on your birthday. Just celebrate. And it was a belated card. And my Andrew wrote, I hope you had a wonderful birthday, Andrew. And I did because Andrew and Bella and Kevin took me out for my birthday. And then the other one that was just a hoot is from Bella. And it's Adam and Eve in the garden. And the snake is hanging off a branch asking Eve as Adam struts around with his fig leaf. Are you going to tell him that's poison ivy or can I? I've been itching to wish you a happy birthday. I did. I had like a whole birthday week. For those of you celebrating Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or Christmas or nothing much at all, you know, the winter solstice or whatever. My best wishes to you this holiday season. That's all for now. This is Marjan Love. And like my shirt says, this has been Marjan's Musings.